What's going on guys? Welcome to Learning Intelligence episode 10. So this morning I tried to wake up a bit earlier than usual and it went all right but I woke up extremely tired so I figured I need to do something to wake myself up. So 20 push-ups, 20 jumping jacks, 20 squats and I'm gonna get into study. Two quick tips for waking up. So first of all, move around, do some movement, do some push-ups, do some jumping jacks, do some body weight squats, go for a walk or something. But before that, drink 500 mils to a liter of water. Because when you sleep, you're in your bed, your body, it sweats, you get dehydrated, and being dehydrated is not a good place to be. So rehydrate and get moving, wake up and get learning. That's what I'm about to do. Decided to head into the library today. I find more and more often, when you're surrounded by people in, in a good environment doing this, a similar thing to what you are and th this goes for the bad case as well like for example when you go to gym you're surrounded by people working out so you're more likely to work out when you go to the library you're surrounded by people who are studying so you're more likely to study and vice versa goes for the bad things if you're surrounded by people who are doing not so great activities well then you're more likely to, to participate in those non-good activities even though at the time you might think that they're the right thing to do because everyone around you is doing the, the same thing but I'm going to go to the library for a few hours, work through the Udacity Artificial Intelligence Nano Degree classes, and look what happened to my water bottle. I was getting out of the car, hopelessly, and it shattered everywhere. I had to pick up all these shards of glass and put it into a little little cardboard box that I had in the car. I didn't have any plastic bag or anything. I picked up most of them, but I couldn't get the really small ones. There's some glass shards on the on the sidewalk here, and I'm, I'm very sorry about that. I'm gonna go tell someone. That's what you get for using a glass water bottle. I just got back from the library. It was actually quite packed. Like, there wasn't many places for me to take a seat. I had to do a few laps before I could find somewhere to sit down and do some study. But that's a good sign. I like seeing people in the library, and I'm glad I went because I got some really good study done. Like I went through, the past two days have been two days where those events happen where it just deters you from what you actually wanted to do. Like, you know, when, well, for my example, I set out six tasks I want to do the next day, the night before, with the number one priority being the first task and I don't do anything else other than the first one. And I struggled to even get the first one done the past two days. And so they've, they've carried over on the subsequent days. So going to the library was a real good chance to catch up on those things I was planning to do yesterday. But someone smarter than me I read somewhere said, whatever you set out to plan to do in your, in your time frame, readjust it by about 50%. And that's, that's an accurate goal of, of where you'll end up unless you're really good and you just you just manage to, to punch things out. But I wrote down, because I went through so many things, I wrote down what, what class I went through. So essentially I'm working towards the final project of term one of the Udacity Artificial Intelligence Nano Degree, which is using hidden Markov models to detect American Sign Language. So different signals, different gestures in American Sign Language. That's gonna be really fun. I'm really excited about this module, actually. The first class was on probability, and the second class was on Bayes nets, and then the third class was on inference and Bayes nets, and now I'm up to about three quarters of the way through the hidden Markov models class, and I'm listening to all the videos on 1.5 speed. I go through them really quickly the first time around, and then I go back through them to, to re-cement the knowledge. That's how I've done it the past few, past few mod modules, and I'm really enjoying that process of doing it. Today has definitely been a productive day. I completed these four classes. So probability, Bayes nets, inference and Bayes nets, and hidden Markov models was the one I just finished up there. And now my next task is to use HMMs to recognize American Sign Language. But as I said before, I'm going to go back through those four classes, probability, Bayes nets, inference and Bayes nets, and hidden Markov models to gain a deeper understanding, as well as I've got a fair few readings that I need to get through. So I probably won't start the project for at least another week or so. That'll give me, that'll still give me 12 days to work on the project. That's the goal anyway. All this talk of Bayes networks, probability, hidden Markov models, and I haven't even given an example yet. I've just told you what I've done. So I've written some notes here about what my overview of the two main concepts in, in those four lectures that I went through, probability, Bayes nets, Bayes nets inference, and hidden Markov models. And so first of all, Bayes network. Well, let's start at probability. So probability at a very basic level is the chances of something happening. What is the likely outcome of an event? For example, a coin toss. If I toss a coin, what is the likelihood that it appears heads and tails? Every time it's a 50% chance of landing on either side. If I do it 10 times, five out of 10 times, I'll get heads. Five out of 10 times, I'll get tails. Now, that won't always happen. Sometimes I'll get seven heads, three tails, eight heads, two tails, vice versa, whatnot. But the longer you do it out, say for a 
we, we toss a coin 100,000 times. It's more than likely that it's gonna converge into a normal probability distribution. So 50,000 heads, 50,000 tails, or very close to that, that ratio 50-50. This is a very simple overview of probability. What's a Bayes network? A Bayes network is essentially a graph showing the chances of one thing occurring based on the chances of another thing occurring. Let's use the Monty Hall problem as an example. If you never heard of it, Monty Hall is a game show host. He did, the classic problem is there's three doors and you can choose one door. Two of the doors have a goat behind it. I'll put a picture here so you can see. And one of the doors have a car behind it. And say you choose door number one. Monty Hall will then open up door number two and reveal that door number two has a goat behind it. So now you know definitely that door number two has a goat behind it. And what the host does is he tries to trick you and say, oh, well, he pretends he tries to trick you. Do you want to switch from door number one to door number three? And what is what, what would this like in a Bayes network? When you choose door number one, you have a 33% chance of choosing the car. And then when you open up door number two, it takes away the fact that door number two is an option anymore. So now you have a choice between door number one and door number three. Should you stay with door number one or switch to door number three? So because because door number two was opened, it increases the likelihood that door number three has the car behind it by 33%. So essentially, the probability from the chances of door two go to the chances of door three. Long story short, you should always switch because when you choose door number one and you have the option of switching to door number three, switching means that you've essentially picked two doors instead of just one. So the Bayes network of this might look like a graph showing you the effects of opening door number two had on the probability of door number three. And what's a hidden Markov model? Model. Well, the academic definition is a statistical tool used for modeling generative sequences characterized by a set of observa observable sequences. Before we talk about hidden Markov models, an example of a Markov model would be deciding or finding the likelihood of tomorrow being sunny based on today being sunny using, say, for example, 100 days worth of previous weather history. Or what's the likelihood of tomorrow being rainy based on today being sunny based on 100, 100 days of weather history. And a hidden Markov model would be say you worked in a windowless room say this room had no window and I was I had no previous weather data and I was trying to predict whether tomorrow was going to be sunny but I didn't know what today was so how how could I get this information that's when I can go to other sources and I can use the fact to say for example people are walking around wearing sunglasses I can probably infer that it was sunny because people have sunglasses on similarly if they were using umbrellas I could probably infer the fact that it was raining so that's where I could get that would be my ability observable data and in the case of a hidden Markov model, I can observe the fact that people are wearing sunglasses and using umbrellas, can use that information to generate a model that's predictive of the next day's weather. So that's where the hidden part comes in of hidden Markov models or HMMs. The fact that I can't see a previous history of weather, but I can observe other data, the direct information of what I'm trying to predict is hidden, but there is still observable information that is related to the hidden information or the information I'm trying to predict. That's my understanding of both those things so far. Bayes net, hit a mark of models and probability. I just gave some really simple examples. Of course, you can go as deep as you want with this, like the rabbit hole keeps going with this sort of stuff. It's actually quite complex once you once you get down into the deepness of it, but that's what makes it so interesting, so exciting. Uh, otherwise, I'll link some Eli 5 documents of what I just went through. That's where I learned most of this stuff from. I did watch the, the lectures and have information overload because it was probably at a higher level than what I'm at just yet. So I use the Eli 5 or the Explain Like I'm 5 documents to, to sort of give me that foundation knowledge and then when I go back through through the lectures for the second time hopefully it, it does that like that second coat of paint and makes everything all shiny and smooth guess what I'm going to Melbourne tomorrow I'm gonna to pack my stuff get it ready it's pretty late at night it's about 8 30 or so but otherwise today I spent most of the day editing a video for learning intelligence episode 9 so that should be up now now that you're watching learning intelligence episode 10 and before I go to bed I'm gonna finish off with a few readings from this this will definitely put me to sleep and so I've, I'm trying to trying to take a new approach to when I'm reading before bed. Most of the time I sort of just get into bed and then I just read a few pages of something. It has recently been this, and this is, aside from this book, Game of Thrones is the longest books I've ever actually read. So I'm up to book two. I've watched all the TV series. It's my favorite show, apart from Mr. Robot, of course. Um, but otherwise, I've got a fair few readings to do in here. Next week's goals are going to be go over the classes I went over this week, or re-go back over them, and start getting ready for, for project four, so the final project in the artificial intelligence nano degree. But otherwise, I'm gonna go pack my suit, and I'm gonna be out for the weekend. So this is the last clip in Learning Intelligence episode 10. If you wanna see anything in a future video, at all, leave a comment below. 
Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you next week. Keep learning.